Thank you, everyone. So uh, until now, we've been hearing about uh, speed, about hacks to, to speed things up. We've been hearing some technical tricks. But now we're going to take this to another level. We're going to talk about uh, where do, at the content level, where do embeddings come from? Because uh, that's something that gets a little bit ignored. We're always talking about the, the speed. We're always talking about how to get everything set up. But now we're going to talk about the content level. So um, my name is Philippe Buzeglu. Uh, I was at Harvard and eventually Stanford. Uh, at Harvard, I, um, I worked alongside Mark Zuckerberg on the first iterations of Facebook. And these days, I'm running a company that is working on an AI foundation model to generate, AI, uh, to, to generate embeddings for search, more specifically for e-commerce search. So um, many of you already know what embeddings are, but just a quick uh, one or two minute overview for the ones who need to be brought up to speed. Embeddings are a representation in vector space of, in this case, products. Um, and so you use n dimensions. Uh, in our case, it's 512 or 768. And we, um, we train our model to have a representation for every possible word and every possible product. Um, this is uh, a, a bit of a visualization of what's going on inside the brain of the AI. Uh, when, you, when you have embeddings in vector space, you can also stack them. You can put them one after the other. And you get essentially a path in n dimensions, as you can see on the, on the left side there. And um, so this is what our model is working it does in the background. And now the, the question is, what does, how does this help you with search? How does this help you, particularly in our case, what we specialize on, e-commerce search? So what ends up happening is that every product can be placed somewhere in this vector space in, like I said, 512 or 768 dimensions, which is too hard to represent uh, on a screen. So of course, we use a little bit of a shortcut here. We do it in three dimensions. Um, and what it does, the major advantage that it has, is that it, it captures the semantic relationships um, between products. And also, for example, you will have substitutes. You will have complementary products that will, be, that will end up being near each other in vector space. And you can use that relationship to, uh, search, along, to search within the vector space. So you can start with a specific product and find the adjacent products. Or eventually, what we will do is that we will put the query somewhere in vector space and find the nearest products. So you've probably all heard about uh, KNN or uh, H uh, uh, HNSW uh, search. This is what it does. So uh, this is a little bit of how it works within inside Elastic for vector search. Uh, if you want to read more about it, there's a URL there uh, on Elastic's website telling you exactly what's going on inside the search engine. But in reality, the, um, the, it's quite simple. Is that you, in parallel, so in parallel, you pre-embed all your products. So you give them a vector representation in vector space for all your products. And at the query time, you do the same thing where you generate for the query a vector embedding. And then Elastic will match the two, will find the nearest neighbor inside the database. And those are essentially your results. Uh, there's a lot more fancy uh, things you can do with hybrid search, where you can mix uh, BM25 results and you can, uh, with the vector results, you can do all sorts of fancy tricks. But the, the essential is, is always back to this for the vector part, is that pre-embed all your products and then embed at query time and make, make them match the, for the, the nearest neighbor. So. Um, yeah, and there are algorithms that are built into Elasticsearch that do this for you, so you don't have to do any, any of this. Now the question is, what will this do for you, for your company, and for um, is eventually conversion is always the goal in e-commerce. So this will help you with uh, product discovery, because when someone either mistypes a, a query, writes a query, in their, own, in their own words, um, uses a synonym. All this you essentially get with, without, with zero effort, because as the query gets embedded, 
even if there's no direct hit at the exact place in, in vector space where the query is, it will find the nearest neighbor. Whatever is nearest, it will find that. So you don't, so you don't need to be exact anymore in your query. So the user doesn't need to be exact in its query anymore. Um, also, you get the semantic understanding of the query. So the concepts, the, the topics, are placed in the same place in vector space, no matter how they're called. So which, whichever word uh, or whichever even exotic synonym a user would use, that is that will be found no matter what the which words the, the user uses. Uh, so we we get a, to be able to essentially in, in the old days we had fuzzy search, we had all sorts of essentially hacks uh, to make this happen. Now we have this built in into Elastic as uh, essentially with zero effort. Um, and of course, in the end, it improves the relevance of the search results because you will get, the user will end up getting better search results without having, um, be, be, without being constrained to exactly what they typed. Now the next question is, how do I get this? <laughs> how do I get this going? So our AI model, um, which is run on massive GPU-based servers, serves through an API where uh, you will do, you can do your, the embedding of your products in essentially five lines of code. Um, thanks to the libraries from Elastic, we're able to, to do this extremely easily. You, you just set up your embedder, get your, get, download your, um, your index into a data frame, run the embedder on it, and upload it back. And now you have products with embeddings. <laughs> um, so this is something that our company took very seriously. Uh, the ease of use for, uh, for the search engineers and uh, the search community. Uh, you can do this much more complicated with all sorts of other, um, there's all sorts of other embedding uh, models and systems out there. But we took very, very seriously uh, two or three things here. So we wanted ease of use for the, for the community. We wanted relevance for, the, for you, the users. And we wanted conversion for the merchants because the, our main use case is e-commerce search. And um, one of the things that is also a key factor disting distinguishing ve the Vectra model from the others is the, the speed at which the queries get embedded. There's been a lot of complaints uh, in the community about when people use a generic model, uh, you can find those on Hugging Face or similar. Um, what happens is that the queries take a long time to get embedded, on the order of one to two seconds. Uh, you can, if you speed things up, you can probably get to 800 milliseconds or so, but uh, it's in the e-commerce use case that is barely acceptable. That is, um, so what what we've done is that we have a separate query embedder query embedding engine that runs separately from the main model that is optimized for speed and that can get it down to a P90 of five milliseconds, which is insanely fast. Um, also for, the, uh, for our larger clients, what we do is that we co-locate in the same data center as them or on the same cloud uh, in cloud region. And so we're able to get the round trip down to a like single digit milliseconds. Uh, so a total on the order of 10 to 20 milliseconds for the query embedding. And that's been a major pain point when people use, uh, use other embedding models. These like lar large long uh, lags and also the, uh, the uncertainty of going over the entire internet to an API somewhere else, else in the world to come back within under a second has been a huge headache. So we, we paid particular attention to that. Um, then, um, back to the other things you can do. With, uh, once you've embedded your, your database, not only can you do semantic search, this essentially fuzzy search, um, you can do the similarity search. So if you want, you can do the, the more like this case in e-commerce, so similar products. Uh, again, like I said, complementary products and substitute products. And you can handle long tail queries. Long tail queries have been a topic that's been popping up recently with the advent of uh, ChatGPT and other search bars. <laughs> uh, so prompt, uh, the, as users, especially younger users, are using ChatGPT, they get used to the style of prompting of ChatGPT. So they get used to writing in their own words what they're after. 
in full text rather than using and and or operators or pluses or uh, in search engines. And so the, we've seen an explosion of, long of the long tail of queries where people start seeing in their, in their search logs these like six, seven word queries that end up with zero search results because BM25 is not going to do very well on a full English sentence. Uh, so this is something we handle natively. And so you, you've got that use case essentially taken care of with this. Uh, for the people in the e-commerce uh, realm, one of the things they care the most about is conversion. And um, so we, I can show you some numbers that we've seen out in the wild. Um, so we've had, uh, if you use generic embeddings, which is already a good start, I would recommend everyone to start right away with the most easily accessible embeddings to them. Um, to just em embed your, your index, of your, your product index, and just try it out. And you could probably get a 2 to 5% conversion rate uh, increase. And um, that's pretty straightforward because you're going to all of a sudden be getting the misspellings, the synonyms, the long tail queries with very little effort. Um, but if you want to go a lot deeper, and most people do in, in, when they're dealing with conversion, uh, what, you, what you need is a specialized embedding model. Ours works very well in the e-commerce use case, particularly products that have a visual component to them. But there are other embedding models, and you can look out on, on Hugging Face. There's quite a few. You can try them out. Try as many as you want and experiment and see which ones work for you. Um, so for us, what we've seen in our, in our deployments is, yeah, um, so we've, we've also helped People reduce search abandonment, so that's the situations where the user doesn't find the product and just gives up. And we've also helped a lot of, with the discovery of products uh, with, like I said, the long tail queries and the, uh, the fuzzy search. So our model called Vectra, uh, what is special about it? We're the only one in the world right now that has multimodality, multimodality built in. So we have... The marketing term would be three modalities, but uh, to be honest, I would call it 2.5. So we have two, two text mo modalities. So we have structured and unstructured data. Structured data is uh, what's in your product database. So the, the features and attributes of the, of the product, usually in, the, in JSON or similar, um, or columns of a database. Unstructured text. Unstructured text is the freeform comments, so when people um, comment either on your website or elsewhere. We can actually seize those comments and um, and process them and attach them to the product. And the key one is the visual component. So an example is that if uh, someone talks about a, um, a a red dress that has been um, so that, so if some, the, the, the typical example, if someone talks about a sexy red dress made out of cotton, those are, those are attributes that come from all three modalities, and we're able to, uh, to find those. So the sexy probably wasn't in the, in the description, but it was in the comments. The red dress was one of the features, um, and then uh, red was from the, the image. The, the feature was that it was a dress. We had the sexy from the comments, and uh, made out of comment. Uh, sorry, made out of cotton from the uh, product features in the JSON, and we're able to put this all together and answer that query, um, which is essentially impossible outside of the w without using embeddings. Um, other than that, we have our, our models been trained very much on uh, visuals, uh, visual characteristics of products. So we have intrinsic knowledge. So none of this you have to do yourself. The model is already pre-trained on all this. Um, if you're wondering then what are the next steps, if you want to get started, right now it's in private beta. Uh, you can get in touch with me. I will have a QR code with a way to, ways to get in touch with me on the next slide, and I'll leave that on after. Okay.